Hey guys, Brian here from 5 to go Today we are talking all about internet and how to avoid scams when it comes to getting internet service for your life on the road, full-time, part-time, anywhere in between. First off, here's a set of time codes so you can jump ahead to different parts of this video if you'd like to. I also have everything separated into chapters here in this uh, YouTube chapter functionality. So if you see a topic that you want to skip to, go ahead. I recommend watching all the way front to back because there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to be building on to get to the uh, final big set of information. But if you want to skip ahead, feel free. First thing I want to talk about is just a baseline level of definitions. We get a lot of people that come into our Discord server, and you're going to hear me say Discord a lot. So, 5 togocom slash Discord. We've had this server running for about uh, three years now. We have thousands of people in there. We talk about all sorts of stuff. And internet is probably the most asked about topic behind how to afford full timing and other topics like that. So if you want to know a lot about internet, 5 togocom slash Discord. If you have any questions about this video, 5 togocom slash Discord. If you have any questions for me specifically, leave one in the comments below or 5 togocom slash Discord. See the theme? So first things first, we get people that come into the Discord server and they say, I need Wi-Fi in my RV. First, Wi-Fi is not internet. Wi-Fi is how your devices like phones, tablets, computers, Fire Sticks, Apple TVs, all of that stuff, that just connects to your network in your RV. On the other side of that Wi-Fi network, you need internet access, and that's what you're actually asking about. So with that out of the way, what I wanna do is I wanna separate this video into four main chunks based on the level of internet access and hardware and network hardware and configuration and security and all of that stuff that you might need. And we're gonna build up from the littlest to the biggest and most expensive. So the first group, I'm gonna call them the vacationers. You've got an RV or you travel around and you're just looking for basic internet. You need to check your email every once in a while. You're not working from the road. You're just keeping in touch with the grandparents, sharing photos of the kids, whatever it is you need to do. It's super like low volatility. You don't need anything super critical. Downtime is fine. You don't need the best connection. You just need to check on a couple things every once in a while. So basically all you need is the hotspot on your phone. That's probably great. It's zero dollars because you already have a phone. So just use that. If, it, if all you're doing is going out for weekends, maybe stream something on Netflix every once in a while, checking your email, checking socials, scrolling endlessly through Facebook videos or YouTube shorts, whatever it is you're doing, your phone is probably fine. You don't need antennas on the roof. You don't need Peplink hardware. You don't need three different hotspot plans. You don't even need Starlink. This is very basic. Just use what you got. Use your phone. Use hotspots that's on your phone and your existing plans, all of that. Just because you have an RV, just because you're traveling in it, doesn't mean you need a big elaborate setup. Now, the next level is what I'm gonna call the vacation worker. You take a couple vacations a year, sometimes it's for a week or two, and you're working while you're on the road. Now, if your work isn't super critical and can be up and down and not be super fast, like if you're just checking in on meetings, checking emails, not doing a lot of like Zoom calls and stuff like that, you're gonna want something that's better than a hotspot, but that's not super, super expensive because you only need it a couple times a year. So what you wanna look for is you wanna look for something like a home internet plan or something that you can turn on and off. Now this is the first time I'm mentioning home internet and it is certainly not the last. You might be thinking, this is an RV, it's a thing that moves around, how can I use home internet? Well, both T-Mobile home internet and Verizon home internet have home internet plans where they give you a router and it connects to their cell towers. And they currently, as of right now, which uh, it's like early May, 2023, they are not locking you to towers. We have dozens of people in our Discord server, fivego.com slash Discord, that are using these home internet solutions. And it is working super, super well for them. Basically all you need is a Verizon signal or a T-Mobile signal and you're good to go. The big catch with those services we will get to in the next category, but for your use, for just a couple weeks a year or for some long weekends, or if you have a little bit of higher data usage requirements, like maybe you like to stream all of your entertainment or you have a bunch of kids or a bunch of people in your rig, one of these solutions is a great, great solution. 
Now you might be thinking, everybody that makes these videos, all the other YouTubers, all the other RV YouTubers, they're all talking about sell plans through all of these random companies. I'm going to talk about those towards the end of the video because that is a very murky thing and it needs to be addressed, but not right now. So T-Mobile Home Internet, Verizon Home Internet, something like that will work great for you. It's something you should definitely check out. I personally have not been able to get it, which is kind of frustrating, because all of the addresses that I have are not eligible for the service. So hop onto their websites, just Google Verizon Home Internet, T-Mobile Home Internet, just Google those, and they will give you a thing where you have to put in your address to see if it's available at your address. Now from all of the reports of the people on our Discord server, they're saying if you can get it at the address that your service is at, they've been able to use it literally all over the country. So great option, check into those. Starlink though is an even better option, but the issue with Starlink is they keep changing all these little plans. It's a lot of hardware, there's a lot of upfront costs. There's some of the plans you can turn on and off, some of them you can't. It's, it's kind of a mess. So I'm going to save that for the next group. But for you guys, for you vacation workers, a couple weeks a year, check into these home internet things. It's currently a really good option. There aren't any hoops to jump through. There aren't any funky contracts. And they're actually really cheap. I think both of them are 50 bucks or less a month. And they might actually be better than what you already have at your house. So check those out. Okay, so this next category is the one that I personally fall into. You're a full-time traveler. You need internet all the time for your work and it needs to be good internet. Now it doesn't need to be 99.99999% uh, uptime. It's okay for things to be a little bit slower. It's okay for things to be uh, slightly a little bit jankier, but for the price, it's exactly what you need and it's gonna fit your life. So first, Starlink. So Starlink is still a relatively new service. It's a relatively new company. They keep changing all of their contracts. They keep changing the different tiers. They keep changing the pricing. The hardware keeps changing. Like, all these things keep changing. However, you can see the sky, you can get connected. And that is a huge thing if you've ever had to deal with cell-based internet services. Like, you guys that are relatively new to this, you have no idea what it was like four or five years ago just trying to get online and stay online. Starlink has actually been a game changer. Like, that term gets thrown around a lot, but it actually has been a game changer. So with Starlink and one or two other cell services, you're going to be fine. So my current setup right now is a Starlink dish coming down into a Peplink BR1 Pro Max 5G or whatever it's named. And I also have an old grandfathered in AT&T unlimited data plan on a proper hotspot. It's one of the Nighthawks plugged into that Peplink router as well. And that Nighthawk is also plugged into antennas up on the roof. So it has as good of a signal as it could possibly get. So between those two connections, I basically never go down. I did have a few issues out west where AT&T wasn't great and we were moving, like maybe stopped at a rest stop or whatever, because obviously the Starlink dish isn't sitting up there while we're moving. So if you need to be able to do stuff on the road or stop and check things while you're driving, you absolutely want to have a cell service because you're not going to use Starlink in motion unless you're in the next tier on this list. So this is actually the first time I've mentioned Peplink. That is a company that makes networking hardware. And they make really, really good networking hardware. If you're in one of the previous two tiers, if you're a vacationer or if you're someone that goes on vacation and works while you're on vacation, the Wi-Fi that you get from your hotspots or whatever your normal plans are, using that as your Wi-Fi is totally fine. You don't need an extra router. It really isn't worth the money to go through a big setup like that. However, when you are working full time, and you're moving around a lot and everything gets a little bit more important and everything is a little bit more based on internet being good, having a nice piece of hardware in between your Wi-Fi network and the internet is fantastic. Peplink pretty much makes the best consumer, prosumer level hardware. The BR1 that's up in that cabinet is $1,000. So it's not very cheap, but it is literally the gateway between me and the internet me and my job, me and doing this YouTube channel. It's an important piece of hardware. It also allows me to have a bunch of different connections into one box and then one Wi-Fi network for all of my devices to connect to. And that was big for me. Before I had that router, I had Starlink running with its router. I had my Nighthawk. And at the time I had a service called Travel Data, which I don't really recommend anymore. 
uh, but I had travel data back then, so I had three different Wi-Fi networks, and I would basically have to go through and change all of the devices main Wi-Fi network based on whichever one was working better, based on where we were set up, and it was a pain. So really the big thing that I got from switching over to a Peplink router was being able to have one access point, and then I can log into that router and tell it, you know, which of these connections is the best. I can just have one turned on, one turned off. Like it automatically, the way I have it configured, knows to just deal with all of these, and I have that one network for all the devices. So I don't have to go through changing like, a wireless printer's Wi-Fi access. It's, it's that to me was worth about half of that thousand dollars. So it's a great thing to have. Another piece of hardware that you're definitely going to want to have in this tier is external antennas. Now your RV might be not as big of a Faraday cage as this one is, but we have aluminum studs in the wall. This roof up here is two layers of aluminum with a bunch of ribs in it going in both directions. There's wires everywhere. There's not a great spot for antennas to sit. So having an antenna that's on the outside is super, super awesome. I actually did a test the other day. I have another router in here from another one of these reseller companies that I'm not comfortable recommending yet because I'm still testing it. But I had it sitting up in there with its antennas in my little networking cavity. I had its antennas attached to it and the signal was okay. This was with Verizon. I detached those antennas and plugged in one of my antennas that's up on the roof. It was night and day. Like, I was all of a sudden downloading stuff four times faster, uploading stuff twice as fast. The signal went from uh, blinking on and off three to a solid four. Like, it is so much better to have an external antenna. So if you can do that, if you need cell service in your rig, you're going to want an external antenna. Those don't have to break the bank. They are not super expensive, but you're going to want to install them properly, and that probably involves drilling a hole through your roof. If you want to see how I did it, I had my friend Ben help out just a couple videos ago. Not the prettiest hole, but it works. So when it comes to actual cell service for this tier, these home internet services are okay, but the main thing about these home internet routers is that the, if you do Verizon home internet or T-Mobile home internet, they will send you a router and it's basically plug and play. You cannot attach external antennas to it. You can't take the SIMs out of them and put them into Peplink hardware. There are a couple different ways that you can still use this kind of router with a Peplink router. You can do Wi-Fi as WAN, which lets you use a Wi-Fi network as a wide area network. You can also, of course, plug it in with an ethernet cable into the WAN port in the Peplink. Uh, there's also a way to plug in uh, WAN devices into the LAN port. They have a, a released a couple different ways in their software to reroute how those LAN ports work. This is a great question for 5 togocom slash Discord, because I don't remember off the top of my head how Ben and I configured that a couple months ago. But it is an option. So the BR1 only has two Ethernet ports. One is WAN, one is LAN. I'm using both for WAN, so it is possible. Now, if you have a business or you can get stuff through your work, they both have, both Verizon and T-Mobile, they both have a business level of this home internet plan. And with that one, you can just get a SIM from them. That way you can use your own router, which is fantastic. A lot of the guys on Discord do that. You can put that SIM directly into a pep link, plug that into antennas up on your roof, and you're golden. It works super great. The problem with those home internet ones, again, is that they have these routers. You can't plug in antennas to them. You can things can get a little funky with those. So if you have a business, if you can get these business level plans, I absolutely recommend doing that over these home internet routers. And that brings us to our final category for the four main categories of travelers. Uh, this is the category that I'm just gonna call the Ben category. If you've been around for a while, you know who Ben is. He's been on this channel several times. He has a huge big RV with a bunch of technology in it, solar, batteries, lots of batteries, even more batteries and a bunch of networking hardware as well. He has, I think he's running two PEP links, like three different cell services and Starlink and, 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 and. He has a lot of stuff going on. So this category is Ben's category. If money is no object, this is what you wanna do. You wanna get one, maybe two, of the Starlink in motion high power dishes that you mount flat on your roof. You wanna have one PEP link for each of those. And then you wanna have a business level plan with unlimited data from each of those providers, so T-Mobile, AT&T, and Verizon, the three big ones right now. 
and you're gonna have business level ones of those. Who knows how much those cost? You're probably gonna have uh, one antenna for each of those, so maybe one antenna for each pep link. You're gonna have a bunch of failover stuff. You're gonna be using Peplink's Speed Fusion service, which can be useful for people like me. I just haven't set it up. Again, Speed Fusion is a, a product that Peplink provides. It's actually part of the software. Um, it basically gobbles up all of your connections into one and feeds them in and out of your uh, network as one big pipe. There's advantages to it, there's disadvantages. Great question again for 5togo.com slash discord. Uh, but getting back to Ben's setup, I don't even know what all he has, but he's actually working with a company now that does uh, corporate level and like industrial level installs on mobile buses and trucks and all of that. And he shares that stuff with us in Discord. So if you wanna see the best of the best, the top line, I need all of the internet, all of the time with all of the speed and downtime is not a word that exists. You should come into Discord and talk to Ben about what those options are. But in all seriousness, you really don't need that much stuff. Like you can just throw money at it and throw money at it and throw money at it. And at some point, the uh, cost of your returns gets really, really thin. But it's nice to know what's out there. So again, 5 to gocom slash discord, jump in to the RV internet or the RV internet advanced channels and ask any questions you have. We will share everything we know. That's the whole point of that discord community. So uh, again, this Ben level of things, is way beyond what most of us need, but it's actually kind of fun to look at sometimes, so come and check it out. Okay, now it's time for the elephant in the room. I have mentioned a couple times in this video uh, the word resellers, and what that is, is it's a company that contracts with the main carriers and buys a large chunk of SIMs, which are the little chips that tell your cell phone or your hotspot how to connect to the towers and your account information and all that, it's a sim, it, it's the brains of the operation. They buy lots and lots and lots of those, and then they resell them to you at an increased price over what they're paying to Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile or whoever. The issue with these, uh, as I don't know if you uh, were paying attention a couple months ago uh, to the whole Nomad debacle, um, Nomad has been around for a number of years, and they have had terrible service for a number of years. It takes three seconds of Googling to know that if you weren't around back then. Basically what happened is they came in heavy and strong, throwing lots of money at influencers to recommend their product. We got dozens of emails from them, just like everybody else did. But I knew about Nomad, and I wasn't going to touch them with somebody else's 10-foot pole. Like, it just never an option. Um, a lot of people did. Didn't really do the research they probably should have done. Um, and started recommending the service. And then, as we all knew, uh, 5 togocom slash Discord, you can scroll back through the history, you can do a search for the keyword nomad. We all knew exactly what was gonna happen, and it happened. They're a scam, they've uh, been reselling hardware, they've been overcharging people, they've been doing terrible, stupid, awful things, and actually the Texas Attorney General is now suing them and trying to put them out of business, which is fantastic. However, they are only one of dozens of resellers. Not all resellers are bad. Some of them have been around for a very long time. Some of them treat their customers like they're human beings. Um, I can't recommend a specific reseller right now. I used to recommend Travel Data because they worked really, really well for us. And uh, it was a great service at the time. But back in January, back at the beginning of this year, they changed all of their services. They changed their pricing structure. They changed how everything works. All the people that I was talking to at that company have now moved on. Uh, so I've moved on. I'm no longer recommending them, so don't go there and get them. Um, and there are a bunch of other people that are out there. They're literally a dime a dozen. They are, they pop up, they try and hit these minimum quotas that the services recommend. They either do but through a lot of huge, heavy marketing push, and they don't have the customer support to back up those uh, large numbers of customers, or they do a good job and they're able to keep up with it and they're able to put the money where it needs to be to support all of you guys that spend your hard-earned money on their product. But I'm gonna give you some tips to find better ones. Again, I'm not recommending any of them specifically by name because I'm not comfortable doing that. However, if you want to search around and look for them, these are some key things to look for. First, 
what is the cancellation or refund policy? Is there a window of time where you can try out their service, try out their hardware, and see if it works for you? Some of them are as short as seven days. Some of them are up to 30 days. You're gonna want someone that's a little bit longer because it takes a little bit of time to try out hardware, to try out software, to try out networks. It just takes time. And a lot of them have this little asterisk where it is seven days or 14 days or whatever from when you receive the hardware. So if you use a mailing service like a lot of us do, you may not even get that piece of hardware for a few days after that clock starts ticking for that refund window. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is what exactly is in that refund policy. A lot of these services uh, and what Nomad was doing is they were charging a lot of money up front. So it was like the first month of service, an administration fee for, who knows, punching some numbers into a spreadsheet, and also a uh, first time setup fee. What a lot of these first time setup fees do is they mask the hardware fee. Because they're gonna have to send you a router and they'll be sending you a SIM chip. What happens and where the biggest red flag for me is, is if you have, we'll say, I'm just gonna keep using Nomad. I'm just gonna keep beating on them because they deserve it. Uh, they had a $400, I believe, it was three or $400 setup fee. Basically what you were doing is you were buying the router from them and using it. Where the bad part comes in is if you cancel your service. If I buy a piece of hardware and then I cancel the service that that hardware was using, I would like to keep my piece of hardware because I can use it with some other service or in some other way. What they were doing is if you canceled your service, you had to send the hardware back or they would keep charging you monthly. Then what they're gonna do, they're gonna take that hardware, they're gonna sell it to someone else for that $400 setup fee, they're gonna cancel a couple months down the road, send the hardware back, they're gonna sell that same router to the next guy you see where this is going? That is a huge red flag. However, if there's like a reasonable setup fee, like free or 50 or 100 bucks, and you have to send the hardware back, that's a little bit better. Um, but if you're paying basically full price for that hardware and then they keep reselling it over and over and over again, that's probably someone running a scheme. Other things you wanna make sure to check on when it comes to looking at these resellers is how much data you're gonna get for the money. There are some resellers out there that claim to be unlimited. I can almost guarantee you that nobody is actually unlimited. I've seen a couple uh, in my research that say unlimited, like they are literally say unlimited. Unlimited is in the name of the company or it's in the package that you're buying. But if you look down through the fine print, there is a limit to the amount of data that you can use per month before they either shut off the service, it gets heavily throttled, or they require you to have two of their service to make up for the difference. So read the fine print. I know it sucks to read through fine print, but if you're paying this much for something and something that you're going to be relying on for work, you need to read through all of this stuff and really pay attention to what these companies are requiring from you, all their little asterisks, all their little ifs and ands or ors and just really really know what you're getting into before working with this company my final tip google the company search for reviews if you go to google and type in nomad internet reviews you will see a laundry list of terrible reviews if you are looking at one of these resellers google their name and look for reviews because if you're scrolling down on their site and they have a nice pretty little bar on their site that has like a photo of some attractive person and five stars and a nice little poll quote above it and it's like oh this service changed my life it was the best thing ever that's probably a lie i've done marketing and web design for 25 years now i can put anything i want on my website i can get a stock photo of a random person or i can take a picture of my beautiful wife and i can put it on there and i can put a quote and i can put five stars and i can say whatever i want that is not an honest review. So Google them separately. Look on Better Business Bureau, look on forums. Reddit is a great place to look for reviews of internet services from real people. Come into 5 togocom slash discord. Talk to real people. We have used a bunch of these services. We can tell you which ones to use. We can tell you which ones to avoid. We can tell you our current recommendations. There's a lot of information out there. 
So don't just look at the website and their pretty marketing stuff and get sucked in by that. There's too much to consider. And a lot of these companies weren't here this time last year or won't be here this time next year. There are a lot of fly-by-night companies. It's I don't know what it is about this industry that people get into and do this crazy stuff, but do your research, ask around, see what other people are using. Just be aware of what you're getting into. So I know that's a lot of stuff. The big data dump. Again, 5 togocom slash discord. Ask questions. Leave comments down below. Ask questions. I will, I will answer things myself if I know them. We have a lot of people in that discord server that are way smarter than me about some of this internet stuff. So they are in there answering questions all the time. Uh, we have a great community that we have established that has been helping people like you every single day get their stuff connected and making their life on the road as awesome as it could possibly be. So, five to go.com slash discord. Check it out, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one.